angels waging war in the unseen realm. Global events fulfilling biblical prophecy, eternal life. What lies beyond mortality? From analyzing the paranormal from a biblical worldview to the discussion of cutting edge science and technology, conspiracy, discovery, special investigative reports. Unafraid to explore the challenging issues facing humanity. Welcome to another edition of Skywatch TV. Special investigative report. The Vatican appears to think it knows something is coming toward planet Earth. What is it? Our special investigative report continues on Skywatch TV about the new book, The Final Roman Emperor, the Islamic Antichrist, and the Vatican's Last Crusade. I'm Derek Gilbert. Joining me in studio, the best-selling authors of Exo Vaticana, Petrus Romanus, and On the Path of the Immortals, Tom Horn and Chris Putnam. Gentlemen, our, our last discussion, we, uh, boy, kind of a whirlwind tour. We got as far as Mount Graham and your investigations that led to the Vatican's observatory on Mount Graham, the Vorg, mm -hmm. uh, and, and why a Christian church is involved in exploring outer space in the first place. What, and specifically, what is it about Mount Graham that the Vatican found so necessary to locate its observatory there? It's a really interesting question, Derek. Um, it, if you, the astronaut Gordon Cooper, he said, you want to know about flying saucers and little green men? Ask the Vatican. They huh. built an observatory up in Arizona, and that's what they're looking for. Huh. That's what Gordon Cooper said. Um, interestingly enough, up there, they really are looking for extraterrestrial life transparently. Um, the most powerful telescope in the world is the Large Binocular Telescope. There's three instruments up there right now. They have plans for more. But the Large Binocular Telescope, its mission statement says that it's looking for other worlds. So it's not even a secret. Uh, the other instrument is the submillimeter radio telescope, which is a big satellite dish uh, that can see into the spectrum that you can't see with the visual uh, eye. And then the Vatican is the Vatican Advanced Technology Telescope, that for mm -hmm. short. And that was basically the prototype of a new mirror technology they pioneered at the University of Arizona. And they got the very first one. And so that's the Vatican's telescope. And they are primary mission right now, if you read on their website, a lot of times they're looking for dark matter. They're trying to, to prove the existence of dark matter. The, the reason why that's really intriguing to this subject is that they think that dark matter might actually be um, matter in a parallel universe. Ah. And the idea is that gravity waves can trans, you know, come through to our universe, but light can't, so mm -hmm. we can't see it. That's why they call it dark, but we can detect the gravity of it, so we know something's there. Mm -hmm. And so they're looking for that. Um, so transparently, even right on the surface, they're, they're looking for parallel universes, other worlds. Um, so, you know, that's not even hidden at all. But then, you know, why did they force themselves up on the Mount Graham? Um, they actually, as we mentioned before, they bypassed all the en environmental laws, everything else. Uh, John McCain had it really just run right through Congress by mm -hmm. fiat, and they got permission to build. And that's why the Indians are really upset. Now, why is that? Well, it's not just that it's a sacred site. They actually believe it's a portal. Now, this ties right into the parallel universe, you know, other realm idea. Um, and uh, Tom actually talked to an Indian who uh, mentioned that, right? Well, well, what had happened was we, you know, so we go up to Mount Graham, the whole book, you know, uh, Exo Vaticana is based on that experience going up there. We met with the Jesuit astronomer. They confirmed stuff for us. Uh, in fact, they told us stuff we didn't even expect to hear about how many times UFOs block deep space, uh, you know, filming operations have to wait for these armadas to get out of the way so they can see past them. It's just extraordinary stuff. Yeah. And they're just talking about it like it's everyday thing. Like, sure, everybody knows there's, you know, there's billions of UFOs in space. Well, we didn't know that, right? We didn't expect these astronomers at the world's most powerful telescope to be saying this openly. So right. we thought that was extraordinary. So we come down off the mountain and what happened was we went on Sid Roth's at Supernatural. And on that program, I happened to say that I thought that the Apache, but there was some other in, uh, indigenous Americans who also joined in, uh, with environmentalists in a federal lawsuit to try to stop NASA 
Arizona State University in the Vatican from building the observatory up there. Well, I thought, okay, the reason that the Apache in particular did that is because they were here ahead of everybody else, right? So it's what? It's like their, their forefathers and foremothers lived and died on the mountain, mm -hmm. so it's like a graveyard. And I said that. I said, so it was holy ground, and they didn't want a bunch of machines in there disturbing the bones of their ancient ones and things like that. Mm -hmm. Well, then I get home, and I get an email from a guy who was a member of the Apache Nation, and he wanted me to know that while what I had said was true, it wasn't the real picture. He said the main reason the Apache did not want them on Mount Graham, he said, is because because Mount Graham is one of the four holiest mountains in all of the world for all American indigenous people. And it is, he said, because it is a doorway. It is a stargate. It's mm. a portal. It's a strategic geographic location through which entities have entered into and exited Earth's reality since the dawn of time. Well, when he said that, you know, my brain went off the conspiracy meter about, oh, wait a minute, now maybe this is something deeper about why that mountain of all mountains, the Vatican and NASA and everybody was fighting to be up there because maybe there's something that we would consider to be metaphysical, mm -hmm. uh, something strange about the mountain. So, th so then what happened? Chris Putnam and I, our Exo Vaticana had already gone to the printer. We couldn't stop and add anything into mm -hmm. it. We get this new information. That's what put us onto the third part of this investigation, a four-year investigation that resulted in the book called On the Path of the Immortals, because we wanted to verify. First of all, since we're Christians and conservative Christians, is this just a bunch of New Age, uh, Indian, right. you know, folklore, whatever? Or is there a biblical precedent for this? And frankly, it kind of revolutionized the way we, were, we could even look at the Scripture because when you start thinking this way, you notice in the Old Testament how often mountains yes. are directly connected to doorways and gateways, both good and evil. Yes. So you've got Jacob, you know, seeing a, a specific place where he actually anoints it and says, here there is a gate to the house of God, yeah. this location. Bethel. And it scared him, right? Yeah. Uh, because he saw a spiral vortex or a spiral staircase or a, what the King James calls a ladder yeah. going up and down and angels ascending and descending. But we also know that there's negative gateways on the earth. New Agers are often really attracted to these vortexes like he went to Sedona to do an investigation. But we found that that too is a biblical uh, idea. For instance, you had recently um, Dr. Mike Heiser yes. was here talking about his book, The Unseen Realm, his research, one of the best ever written on the subject. And he pointed out how that uh, there in where Aga Bashan, that Bashan and Caesarea Philippi at the base of Mount Hermon, mm -hmm. the Hebrews believe that was the gateway to the underworld. Right. But it's right there where Jesus stands and says, the gates of hell. Well, they knew exactly yeah. what he was saying, right? Yeah. Shall not prevail against my church. And upon this rock, I will build it. I'm going to build my church, right? And, and, and a few days later, he goes up on the Mount Hermon mm -hmm. with his disciples, and that's where he's transfigured. Yeah. Like, like Dr. Heiser says, he is literally sticking a stick in the eye of those offspring of the watchers who thought they were going to come to the earth and take dominion over the earth away from God. And that story goes on and on, and people can watch the, you know, the archived. Uh, but, but we started seeing that this was everywhere this idea of gateways, doorways. So then what happened was we sent Chris, who went into Sedona uh, with a film crew. I went to the Four Corners area of the United States because we, now we wanted to really follow up on, okay, if, if there's something about Mount Graham, if they believe that in the time before time, creation, basically the Creator came down over the mountain, but then soon there were these other things fiery flying seraphim, they draw mm. them, and their ancient petroglyphs are a thousand years older than when Jesus walked in flesh. They show a spiral vortex, a reptilian being coming through, deceiving the Native American peoples, then giants start swarming over the land, they cry out to the great God of heaven, He sends a universal flood. I mean, they're literally telling the Old Testament story mm. uh, from this side of the world. The key, of course, and this is what this is all culminating in, and, and we'll get to this in just a moment, because uh, 
I, I think we need to devote quite a bit of time on this uh, as, as our special investigative report continues. Uh, what does this mean for today? Mm -hmm. And that's where we'll take this conversation in just a moment. First, want to tell you about the biggest giveaway of 2016 from Skywatch TV and Defender Publishing. Again, the book, The Final Roman Emperor, The Islamic Antichrist and the Vatican's Last Crusade. When you order the book, over $150 worth of product. We'll tell you about that, and we'll be back with Tom Horn and Chris Putnam right after this. In 2012, they shocked the international community when they predicted the resignation of Pope Benedict one year in advance. Breaking news, Pope Benedict XVI announces his resignation. Yeah, it is the first time in centuries a pope has stepped down. And I knew Pope Benedict was going to step down April 2012. Leaving the world wondering just who their insider at the Vatican really was. In 2013, they exposed the mysteries of Mount Graham, the Lucifer device. This first station is an instrument called Lucifer. And the Vatican's secret plan for the arrival of an alien savior. Then in 2015, they took the world underground to uncover the truth behind the Native American legends of giants, the portals they once came through and the most overlooked aspect of end times prophecy regarding their return. Now, in their final entry to the explosive four-year investigation, internationally acclaimed best-selling authors Thomas Horn and Chris Putnam unveil their greatest discovery and make their most astonishing prediction yet involving the imminent prophesied arrival of a mysterious, final Roman Emperor. At that time, the Prince of Injustice, who will be called the Antichrist, will rise. He will be the son of perdition and the culmination of pride. He will deceive many, but when the Roman Empire will fall, then the Antichrist will show himself, and he will sit in the house of God in Jerusalem. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that brought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. Thomas Horn, Chris Putnam. This will be the final entry and the greatest prediction yet, coming May 2016. The final Roman Emperor, the Islamic Antichrist, and the Vatican's last crusade. Coming exclusively from Skywatch TV for a very limited time starting May 31st, 2016. When you purchase the new book and final report from Tom Horn and Chris Putnam, The Final Roman Emperor, The Islamic Antichrist, and The Vatican's Last Crusade, you will receive the largest giveaway of 2016, an unprecedented value of over $200 in free books, DVDs, audio files, and a data DVD library with tens of thousands of pages of ancient literature no longer available, as well as movies, WikiLeaks files the government does not want you to see, and more for your library or to give away as gifts. Included in this biggest giveaway of 2016 are Chris Putnam's full-length DVD presentation, Astrobiology and the Vatican ET Connection, the new five-part Skywatch TV special investigative report on the book, The Final Roman Emperor, plus two mystery books with a $40 value, and a data DVD library with thousands of pages of ancient literature, movies, and audio series for your library or to give away as gifts. And for the first several thousand customers, while supplies last, you'll also receive Satan's Dirty Little Secret, the two demon spirits that all demons get their strength from. Satan, You Can't Have My Promises, the spiritual warfare guide to reclaim what's yours. 
What Happens When I Die? True Stories of the Afterlife and What They Tell Us About Eternity. Becoming a Prayer Warrior, a guide to effective and powerful prayer. An unprecedented value of over $200 in never before offered free products. And the biggest giveaway of 2016, yours absolutely free when you purchase the final Roman Emperor from SkywatchTV.com for only $19.95 plus shipping, beginning May 31st. But be advised, this astonishing promotion is limited to first come, first serve while supplies last. So it's urgent, beginning May 31st, 2016. You place your order for the final book and biggest prediction yet in this four-year investigation by internationally acclaimed best-selling authors Tom Horn and Chris Putnam. The Final Roman Emperor, The Islamic Antichrist and the Vatican's Last Crusade for only $19.95 plus shipping. This offer is on a limited time basis and will end without notification. So be sure to visit skywatchtv.com to follow the updates in the countdown to the biggest giveaway of 2016. Order the new book by Tom Horn and Chris Putnam on May 31st to receive the unprecedented value of over $200 while supplies last. Free products limited to quantity on hand and may be replaced by products of equal value. We mentioned some programs on Skywatch TV, uh, the interview with Dr. Heiser as an example. Uh, you can find that online, and we want to make you aware of the exclusive online content that you'll find from Skywatch TV. You'll find links to it at the website, skywatchtv.com, the Skywatch TV YouTube channel, the Skywatch TV channel on Roku. To find those programs, again, log on to the website, skywatchtv.com. Uh, the Final Roman Emperor, the Islamic Antichrist, the Vatican's Last Crusade. Um, I, I guess the question is, if the Vatican is aware of these portals, these, these holy places, uh, the high places, if you will, to use a biblical term. Um, why are they relevant in 2016? What did you find in your research that points to the time in which we're living right now that led to the new book? Well, Chris and I can both speak to this, but for me the key relevance is because we uh, on Skywatch Television, we also like to talk about end times, biblical prophecy. And probably the most overlooked aspect of end times prophecy, you don't hear any of the prophecy scholars basically ever talking about this, is that these gateways that opened once before are predicted to open again. And this is something you just don't hear people talking about. Right. For instance in Isaiah 13, when he's talking about the end times utter destruction of Babylon, and this is where a lot of this started. There was a gateway in Babylon too. Right. Uh, and it was built by Nimrod who we believe is, is going to have a second coming too, the Antichrist, mm -hmm. the spirit of that. Right. Uh, it, but in Isaiah 13 right there in Babylon it says, open the gates ye ruler, I give command and I bring them, giants are coming to fulfill my wrath. And so there are, there are places in Scripture, there's places in the apocryphal text, the book of Enoch, the book of Jubilees, that all foresaw this future moment in which these gateways of the earth are going to open again, and there will be an eruption of these gigantic beings. Now, um, for instance, in Revelation chapter 9, a yes. mighty angel comes down from heaven and says he has the keys to another gateway, right? Mm -hmm. To the bottomless pit, he opens it up, and these hybrid demonic things start coming up out of the ground. But again, Nimrod, Apollyon, Osiris, it says they have a king over them down there in this pit, whose name is Abaddon, or who's known in the Greek tongue, Apollyon, Apollo. Mm -hmm. And so that was probably the, 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 the biggest uh, revelation of the book on the path of the immortals is the historical evidence that this happened once before and the biblical prophetic evidence that it's also predicted to happen again in the end times. Hmm. The, uh, the, these texts, and, and there are hints at this throughout the Bible. You mentioned Isaiah 13. Um, I, I know in the weekly Bible study that Sharon and I do, we stumbled across Abaddon is mentioned as a as a, a an entity, mm -hmm. uh, and the dead are held in right. Abaddon. Mm -hmm. um, so, how do we interpret this? I mean, we also see a, a, a clue here with the uh, the medium of Endor, where mm -hmm. King Saul mm -hmm. goes to consult with a medium to bring back the spirit of Samuel, mm -hmm. uh, and he comes up from the earth, and and uh, uh, she says, I, I see an Elohim arising from the earth, a spirit arising from the earth. Uh, are, are these the kind of gateways we're looking at, where s something that is being held right now in a, in a sort of holding tank? 
it, it will, will be loosed upon the earth? I, I think so. And, you know, Derek, uh, we've mentioned Dr. Michael Heiser a, a few times, and I you know, just have to, to mention him again, because um, a lot of these things are kind of hidden by our translations. Um, you know, people who translate from the Hebrew into the English or the Greek into the English sometimes, you know, don't really get it, I think. And, you know, it's almost like the Bible's been censored to me sometimes when mm. I read it. Um, and Dr. Heiser, being an ancient languages scholar, uh, points a lot of that out. And, uh, you know, one of the things that really fascinated me right from the beginning is that, uh, you know, there's a story in the Garden of Eden about a serpent uh, beguiling Eve, you know, and deceiving her. You know, on the surface, it almost seems absurd because snakes don't have vocal cords. You know, they can't talk. So what was it, telepathy or what? Was this a talking snake that, that, that's there? But if you read uh, Dr. Heiser's understanding of the Hebrew language, you see that this word nakash. Mm -hmm. um, in Hebrew, uh, an adjective can be substantivized, meaning it can be turned into a noun. Mm -hmm. Now, if that's the case, um, it could literally mean shining one. Mm -hmm. And so Dr. Heiser would say Eve was deceived by a luminescent serpentine being. Mm -hmm. um, now it starts sounding more like what people call aliens or something like that. Right, and reptilians. It, and it gets really interesting. Uh, and then you see these fiery flying serpents in the book of Isaiah. What's right, that? Right. What is that? Well, the same word is Seraph. the seraphim. The seraphim, seraphim. right. Yeah. That are flying around saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. Uh, so you see holy seraphim, yet in our translations in Isaiah, it doesn't use the word seraphim. Seraphim is a transliteration of Hebrew, right? But when you get later and it's in an evil context in the judgment of Babylon, they call them fiery falling serpents, but it's the exact same term. It's, you know, it, it, they just translated it differently. And, and these seem to be exactly what the indigenous people were describing as coming through a portal. I mean, if you look at the myth, and it's very interesting because like Mount Graham again, uh, they describe in the time before time, the great creator comes down. And what's interesting is they describe him as a bearded man and the Apache don't have any facial hair. That's right. So they describe him as a bearded man. He, he sounds like the book of Revelation description of the ancient one. Uh, but they say is he's, he's in a, a uh, a silvery disc. Now, of course, you know, the, the, the guys that subscribe to like the ancient astronaut theory might jump on that and say, ha ha, see, the aliens <laughs> came and created us. Right. And maybe that's why the Vatican's up there talking about aliens. But what they miss is what the uh, ancient Jewish rabbis call the Merkavim. This is what Ezekiel saw, the wheel in the middle of the wheel, which is described as circular, it's shiny. It but also alive, that these are living at, beings. That it's a living being. Yes. But when we look at it and we we don't know what it is. We simply describe it. I think uh, Josh Peck at one time talked to you about, is it the Ophanim? Yes. You know, these angelic presences that are described as circular, they're moving back and forth from the throne of God. So when you think of that, that sounds like what the Apache are describing, this literal flying uh, vehicle. The Creator comes down. Uh, but then it says not long after that, this doorway opened again. And that's when they said this man that wasn't really a man, he was a serpent. He was the king of the watchers. In fact, the Dead Sea Scrolls refers to him. I think his name in the Dead Sea Scrolls is Makrisha, but it describes him as being very dark, very serpent-like, like a like a viper, mm -hmm. very frightening with piercing eyes. Right? Well, this is what the this is what the indigenous people drew on their petroglyphs, and they said he started teaching, and this brings us full circle. He started teaching the uh, um, the Indians to go down into their underground kivas and to practice what he called witchcraft sorcery, pharmakia is how the Bible describes it, for the purposes of opening doorways into the underworld, to put themselves into contact with what was down there. So, bring it full circle back to him talking about dark matter. Here's CERN, they're working with the Vatican up on the top of Mount Graham to try to make contact with dark matter. CERN's trying to open a doorway. Mm -hmm. They're too using, they're trying to film gravitons escaping into a parallel universe. But go back to Revelation 9, when this gate of the earth opens up and these things come up out of the earth. How does Revelation 9 end? The people that are being tormented by those plagues, what does it say? And yet they repented not of their sorcery. Yeah. And this is the Greek word pharmakia. Pharmakia is simply an effort to try to bypass what God has sealed off from us, to put ourselves into contact with something that He has put behind a gateway that He says is forbidden for us to make contact with it. So we, we use drugs, we use whatever we have to do to put ourselves into a mental, altered mental state to make contact with what is there. So, yeah. so we have a rich 
corroboration in American history that says the same thing that happened in the Middle East when Moses was writing the Pentateuch and there were giants in the earth in those days and also after that, the same thing was happening here. The same story. It ends with the flood. It's all the same story. It's a corroboration of Scripture. Hmm. And it's the same story that uh, we, we hear about from the days of Enoch when the watchers came down at Mount Hermon, again, which uh, led Jesus to uh, put the stick in the, the right. supernatural eye uh, w- uh, with the transfiguration on, on Mount Hermon, um, w- which is phenomenal. In fact, w- bringing Mike Heiser back into the conversation again, was listening to a program that he recorded here not long ago in, in which he said that uh, there was a period during the early Christian church where uh, there were those who felt among the early uh, Christians that Enoch should have been given as much weight as Moses. Mm-hmm. Now, of course, Enoch is not canonical, but mm-hmm. it does seem to parallel what you learned in your research about uh, what the uh, the Native Americans in the American Southwest believe about Mount Graham, uh, the, these other holy spots around the planet, we we know of um, you know Mount Hermon. Uh, there there was a mount uh, in northern Syria near the border of Turkey today called Mount Acre, but in the day Mount Zavan, which was supposed to be the uh, the location of Baal's palace. But we also know that there all over the planet there are artificial cosmic mountains. Babel, Babylon, mm-hmm. uh, the, uh, the step pyramids of, of Mesoamerica. Uh, we see pyramids all over the planet. Was this just an attempt by mankind as we spread across the planet after the Tower of Babel to try to bring mankind into contact with these entities? Is, in other words, is what the Vatican trying to do now, apparently, just a high-tech version of building the Tower of Babel? You know, perhaps that's the case. You know, Mount Graham is a portal, and they're up there for that reason. Uh, you know, it would lead to that conclusion, would it not? Huh. Uh, you know, they call it a, um, a very rare ecosystem. If you go out there, it's, it's the mountain, you're in a desert, and when you start, if you go up the mountain, you start to see lush forests and completely different environment. But so it's almost... Um, a unique environment. Well, they call it a sky island, and it very much reminds you of what uh, Dr. Heiser was saying about the mountains were considered the garden of God, right? It was a garden, but also a mountain. Place Mm -hmm. where the gods would would exist, and that very much is that same kind of an environment. Well, we've we've still only scratched the surface, but our Mm -hmm. special investigative report will continue. The new book, again, The Final Roman Emperor, The Islamic Antichrist, and The Vatican's Final Crusade will bring this into present day in our next program, as we continue. And we thank you for watching as we keep watch. I'm Derek Gilbert and this is Skywatch TV. Angels waging war in the unseen realm. Global events fulfilling biblical prophecy. Eternal life. What lies beyond mortality? From analyzing the paranormal from a biblical worldview to the discussion of cutting edge science and technology, conspiracy, discovery, special investigative reports, Unafraid to explore the challenging issues facing humanity. Welcome to another edition of Skywatch TV. Special investigative report. 
The Vatican appears to think it knows something is coming toward planet Earth. What is it? Our special investigative report continues on Skywatch TV about the new book, The Final Roman Emperor, the Islamic Antichrist, and the Vatican's Last Crusade. I'm Derek Gilbert. Joining me in studio, the best sell dish uh, that can see into the spectrum that you can't see with the visual uh, eye. And then the Vatican is the Vatican Advanced Technology Telescope, that for mm -hmm. short. And that was basically the prototype of a new mirror technology they pioneered at the University of Arizona. And they got the very first one. And so that's the Vatican's telescope. And they are primary mission right now, if you read on their website, a lot of times they're looking for dark matter. They're trying to, to prove the existence of dark matter. The, the reason why that's really intriguing to this subject is that they think that dark matter might actually be um, matter in a parallel universe. Uh -huh. And the idea is that gravity waves can trans, you know, come through to our universe, but light can't, so mm -hmm. we can't see it. That's why they call it dark, but we can detect the gravity of it, so we know something's there. Mm -hmm. And so they're looking for that. Um, so transparently, even right on the surface, they're, they're looking for parallel universes, other worlds. Um, so, you know, that's not even hidden at all. But then, you know, why did they force themselves up over the Mount Graham? Um, they actually, as we mentioned before, they bypassed all the en environmental laws, everything else. Uh, John McCain. Apache, but there was some other in uh, indigenous Americans who also joined in uh, with environmentalists in a federal lawsuit to try to stop NASA Arizona State University in the Vatican from building the observatory up there. Well, I thought, okay, the reason that the Apache in particular did that is because they were here ahead of everybody else, right? So it's what? It's like their, their forefathers and foremothers lived and died on the mountain, mm -hmm. so it's like a graveyard. And I said that. I said, so it was holy ground, and they didn't want a bunch of machines in there disturbing the bones of their ancient ones and things like that. Mm -hmm. Well, then I get home, and I get an email from a guy who was a member of the Apache Nation, and he wanted me to know that while what I had said said was true, it wasn't the real picture. He said the main reason the Apache did not want them on Mount Graham, he said, is because Mount Graham is one of the four holiest mountains in all of the world for all American indigenous people. And it is, he said, because it is a doorway. It is a stargate. It's mm. a portal. It's a strategic geographic location through which entities have entered into and exited Earth's reality since the dawn of time. Well, when he said that, you know, my brain. Authors of Exo Vaticana, Petrus Romanus, and On the Path of the Immortals, Tom Horn and Chris Putnam. Gentlemen, our, our last discussion, we, uh, boy, kind of a whirlwind tour. We got as far as Mount Graham and your investigations that led to the Vatican's observatory on Mount Graham, the Vorg, mm -hmm. uh, and, and why a Christian church is involved in exploring outer space in the first place. What, and specifically, what is it about Mount Graham that the Vatican found so necessary to locate its observatory there? It's a really interesting question, Derek. Um, it, if you, the astronaut Gordon Cooper, he said, you want to know about flying saucers and little green men? Ask the Vatican. They huh. built an observatory up in Arizona, and that's what they're looking for. Huh. That's what Gordon Cooper said. Um, interestingly enough, up there, they really are looking for extraterrestrial life transparently. Um, the most powerful telescope in the world was the large binocular telescope. There's three instruments up there right now. They have plans for more. But the large binocular telescope, its mission statement says that it's looking for other worlds. So it's not even a secret. Uh, the other instrument is the submillimeter radio telescope, which is a big satellite, had it really just run right through Congress by mm -hmm. fiat, and they got permission to build. And that's why the Indians are really upset. Now, why is that? Well, it's not just that it's a sacred site. They actually believe it's a portal. Now, this ties right into the parallel universe, you know, other realm idea. Um, and uh, Tom actually talked to an Indian who uh, mentioned that, right? Well, 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 what had happened was we, you know, so we go up to Mount Graham, the whole book, you know, uh, Exo Vaticana is based on that experience going up there. We met with the Jesuit astronomer. They confirmed stuff for us. Uh, in fact, they told us stuff we didn't even expect to hear about how many times UFOs block deep space, uh, you know, filming operations have to wait for these armadas to get out of the way so they can see past them. It's just extraordinary stuff. Yeah. And they're just talking about it like it's everyday thing. Like, sure, everybody knows there's 
You know, there's billions of UFOs in space. Well, we didn't know that, right? We didn't expect these astronomers at the world's most powerful telescope to be saying this openly. So right. we thought that was extraordinary. So we come down off the mountain, and what happened was we went on Sid Roth at Supernatural. And on that program, I happened to say that I thought that the 